Dan Duquette, executive <laughs> vice president, getting ready for the uh, upcoming draft. Thanks for coming in. I'm glad to be here. We could sprinkle your ashes out there, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> My ashes are going in a vineyard for some really good use. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about the draft. Uh, uh, just a general overview. How tough is the draft in terms of getting somebody that's going to make a difference? Well I, I like the draft but there's a big difference between having one of those first 10 picks like the Orioles had when they selected Manny Machado and Matt Wieters and the Orioles did real well with those top two but after that it's it's a crapshoot right. Mm -hmm. I mean the further on you go in the draft the more difficult it is to find a player that is healthy and can come up and help your ball club and 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 I think that a lot a lot of times people will miss the point and they think that all those picks have the value of those top 10 picks in the draft. I mean the first 10 picks in the draft it's not like the major leagues is like the NFL where they play in the SEC yeah. and then they come out and they start the following year. There's still more development skill development like Kevin Gosman we took him in the draft in 2012 and Oriole fans saw him when we introduced him. He was a four pick in the draft but it took him a while to get to the big leagues he had some injuries he had to learn a, a better breaking ball Dylan Bundy same thing he's another top ten pick he had some injuries uh, he had some seasoning to do so it takes a little while for those players to get to the big leagues and and uh, I think having the depth of the picks of the draft is helpful uh, where we've got four of the top ninety and Gary Rasich and our scouts are in here working on it uh, that's six. But given the chance between having a player that can impact our team right now and not knowing uh, if the player we're going to get in the draft is going to impact our team in the future and at what level, we'll take that player now, which is why we traded and we're able to sign Jimenez and Nelson Cruz, who had a terrific year, and why we traded a draft pick for Gallardo for this year. So we're trying to win and have a competitive team and still build our prospect base, but it's hard to do if you're having a good team because you're not going to get that top 10 pick. Picking the draft, and we're not going to compromise the quality of our major league team. Just off the glove of Manny Machado. So Ellsbury at the top of the order gets the one out single with Gardner coming up. So, so we're putting the resources into our major league team to try to be good year in and year out. And I think, uh, uh, you know, by and large, we've done a pretty good job. And when we do have a top 10 pick, we're going to bear down and <laughs> try to get a Machado or a Weeders or a Gosman yeah. to help the team. So it really doesn't depend on who is out there at that time you're picking or do you have a philosophy in the sense that OK we can't take too much time with a high school guy let's go after a, a college player that's more developed and probably gets to the big leagues a little soon. Well I, I think uh, some of both uh, Major League Baseball I think by and large does a good job with the high school players that are really gifted and they take them the top of the first round middle of the first round. And then they get to the big leagues in a period of time like say three four or five years I think MLB does a good job with that. The college players are a little bit more developed they're more mature they've had the experience of playing in college. They've had the uh, time to physically mature and they take a little bit shorter time frame. I think what we try to do is try to get the best athlete with the best chance to be the most reliable player and you know that varies from year to year and then we have to of course draft a lot of pitchers to have a lot of pitching in the minors for trades uh, for players to come up and then of course there's a lot of injuries to the pitcher so it's a real arms race for everybody and there aren't enough to go around Major League Baseball so mm. you know it's it's a really uh, really difficult and there's significant risk uh, in drafting the pitching and developing the pitching fortunately we've done a pretty good job of it we've got Gosman we have Bundy we have Michael Givens we have Tyler Wilson. And they're all up uh, helping our major league team. Do you put a number on that? Do you, do you go into the draft saying we need to get 10, 12, 8, whatever it is, pitchers coming out of this? We got to have them available. Well, we 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 draft probably more than half of our players are pitchers, yeah. and then uh, we try to sign pitchers on the international level, look for pitchers in trade, uh, pick up uh, pitchers and. Trading the international signing bonus money. We've done that a little bit the last couple of years. We traded for this kid, Chris Lee, who we like. And we traded some international signing bonus money to another club that was signing players. Um, so we're, we're looking in all the markets. Uh, but when it comes to the June free agent draft, we're looking at getting a lot of pitching depth into the system every single year. Two ball, one strike count, one down. Ellsbury on the first base. Gardner, that's going to get away. 
That'll be chased down and Ellsbury will get into scoring position. That'll be a wild pitch charge. That's the first of the year charge to Gosman. See the pitch here spiked in the dirt and Pena trying to backhand it kicking off. The heel of the glove and away. So Gardner RBI chance he had a double his first time up. A lot of fans were asking the Brian Mattis situation. Atlanta took him immediately designated him for assignment. But what they were looking for was something else. What was it in the and it was a draft thing right. Yeah Atlanta. Uh, wanted the competitive balance pick that the Orioles got in the lottery. Donovan scope will be up runner goes over to third two down and we, we sent that to him. We also got a couple of pitchers in the draft. Uh, we got a kid named Barker who's won a couple games for us in double A a lefty named Belichick who's down in a ball but what Atlanta wanted they wanted to give some hope to their fans and they've been accumulating the draft picks and along with the draft picks you get this signing bonus pool money which allows you more resources in which to sign the players that you take in the draft so their their idea uh, having a team that doesn't have a good record is to build up their prospect inventory provide hope for their fans and that's why they traded for Mattis as well as the draft pick but what they were really after obviously after they designated Mattis and cut him loose was was the draft pick and the value of that draft pick for their future team. Uh, I have a question uh, just about forward thinking in the draft. How often do you like look ahead and say okay next year we have this amount of free agents so we better load up on this type of player you know maybe even two years into the future. Well we, you know we did that um, we, we do that with our pitching of course we did that with Gosman so we said look we're we, we need a starting pitcher to impact the top of our rotation so we identified the best college pitchers we could get and Kevin Gosman was our pick. We also did that the following year when we took a look at when uh, Matt Wieters was going to be a free agent and we ended up drafting a number of catchers. They said so a rod yet another single but it is a productive one. Ellsbury advanced on a wild pitch and a ground ball will come across the score the Yankees on the board with a one nothing lead. And that year we, we drafted uh, the kid Murphy the local kid who's a catcher we drafted Chance Cisco and we drafted Jonah Heim now Cisco's in double A Heim is in class A and Murphy's in class A and those guys are coming along. Yeah, Murphy's been swinging it, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been swinging the back good. And Cisco is a good hitter, and Jonah Himes is a switch hitter with power, very good catcher. And I know uh, John Russell likes him a lot. How many reports will you have that you consolidate going in to make your decisions? We have approximately 25 uh, scouts that are submitting reports. And then we have the area scouts and then we have the cross checkers and then we have of course our scouting director Gary Rasich. So any player that we're going to take we probably have uh, four to six reports on them and each of those players. Let's say there's a, uh, about twelve hundred players drafted oh, so geez. you know we, we've probably got about I don't know eighty five hundred. So the, I mean it's that the process never stops. Them. Well it's a year round process our scouts will go out in the summertime see a lot of the top summer leagues the Cape League Team USA a lot of these high school showcases the Under Armour showcase uh, of course our scouts will see in perfect game um, and then you know we'll follow up during the year with trying to get a consensus yeah. of opinion having a number of scouts see the player the, the video resources are very helpful you can see a lot of players on video now. Pitch will be taken inside. L1 the count two down. Starling Castro up run in on the A rod base hit. He's at first base. How in depth do you get as far as finding out um, you know what the kid eats his health <laughs> and thing. I mean it really fascinates me especially a higher pick you know taking uh, chances on it on a kid. Yeah side. absolutely. You know there's a number of uh, social media allows you to do a lot of research on these players. So that you have a lot more information on their personal habits, mm. uh, and then you know there's a lot of resources in college baseball that are available to us now. Uh, you know, there's there's uh, this uh, TrackMan information in a lot of the colleges where you can see the spin rate and the and the uh, velocity of the pitchers. Um, it's just like the major leagues. Well, the, the, there's a there's a lot more precise ways to to value the talent. 
And you know all the clubs are in a race to do a good job. It really still comes down to having scouts that can identify talent and tell you who the dependable players are. Then we really appreciate it. Good luck with the draft and thanks for helping us out Thank understanding a very complicated system. Thank you. <laughs>